I actually came to a game 18 months ago. Um, you know, as I said earlier, we've, we've been on pre plenty of vacations over here to visit my son, um, and we got acquaintances, myself and Zoran, who knew each other, and I got I got invited to the game against Red Bull, and really enjoyed the game. Uh, it, uh, Charlotte were winners on the day 2 0, and it was a great atmosphere. You know, you could tell it was a, a community driven club, you know, where, with the supporters. And I think that, that warmth and that feel never left me. Um, so, to answer your question, uh, when the, the role came up, I was uh, approached to see if I would be interested in the role, and I then done my due diligence and just spoke to my family as I always do, and uh, we felt that this could be a really good opportunity. Who's a badass? She's a badass. Who's a badass? She's a badass. Hey, Dino, what's up, man? Welcome to Charlotte, dude. Uh, man, we love you. Can't wait to see what you do on the pitch. Um, hopefully, it won't be what Villa did to my Spurs, but, you know, that's a whole other story. But welcome to Charlotte. Man, we get some tea, maybe some crumpets, man. Do an old English breakfast or something, man. Just hit us up. Love an interview. Blood sausage. Derek Johnson. If you're seeing this, Derek Johnson, I love you, man. I love you. Right, you're the only midfielder I love. Yo, get off Capetti's nuts, there! I told you, get off his nuts. Capetti is a baller, Vincent. Just saying. That big apple was a golden delicious, baby. Let's go! Atlanta, we go over there. We killing you. That's, that's kind of, uh, a, anyways, we'll skip right over that. Anyways, delete that out of the video, please. My mom would be so disappointed. TJ, I'm going to have to hire you for photography. It ain't no TJ, it's JT. JT. <laughs> <laughs> you changed the name, man. It's fine, it's fine. AK, we're all the cleats on. You smell, the, the airflow in here is really good. It smells really good. But they want to stretch their stuff out, get their workout on. Bam. Um, we love Christian, Kalina. I don't know. What can March do better? Uh, is absolutely top notch. We're top so notch. proud of him. We love him in Germany. Yeah, he did a great job. So like when you go on Kalina's website, you give him like a five star Yelp review. Absolutely. 100% every time. Damn, I ain't got no interview or nothing. Anyway, over here at Queen City. <laughs> CLTFC fans, by the fans, by the fans, damn it. Hey, hey, George, 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 George. I got it, I got it. Is it CLTFC Fan TV for the fans, by the fans, damn it. Damn, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Am I coming through? Oh, Someone yeah, that's what I'm feedback. talking about. Who's got some feedback? 
Probably Jorge got some feedback about what's going on. No, CLT. You sound oh, terrible. Man. Gosh darn it. Let me put those up. Yep. There was definitely you. Oh, there. Yeah. Now it's better. Is that better yep. now? Much better. M much better. Excellent. Excellent. Hey, this is CLT FC Fan TV for the fans, by the fans. Damn it. Damn I'm it. JT coming off my phone because my internet's jacked up. Come on, ATT. What y'all doing? It's been five man, hours. Y'all always gave me a hard time for having bad internet. Oh, I'm telling at, least you, man. At, least, well, at least I showed up with a computer that worked. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Although you're looking kind of dark in the light or something. That's my partner, Lee. Hey. And down below us is our homie, What's Jorge, up, Jorge Gonzalez, Top Ben 90. Currently working on a script for the Top Ben 40 pre-Top Ben 90, like the story of which is, which is, you know, great, great. So welcome all. Please sub if you can. And uh, what's up, fellas? What's going on? Not much. You tell me. Uh, I'm thinking from our intro when I'm hearing, get off Capetti's nutsack. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking some people are on that nutsack right now. Ooh, that's a hot take. Hot Wait, take some people, <laughs> I mean... Raise a camera coming in clutch. <laughs> Jorge's about to hit the club. I think Jorge's going to mute. Tuesday, guys. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with Tuesdays? Listen, it doesn't get good in Charlotte until Thursdays. That's right. You need to hang it out south side. South side. For sure. Hey, man. So, yeah, if you guys are new to the show, of course, hit that sub button for us. If you're a regular OG, hit the like button. And if you're just an OG, hit the like button and... If you don't feel like seven, hit the like button. But yeah, so we got the call line set up so you guys can call in. We're going to talk some short FC. We're going to talk uh, some top in 90 stuff. And uh, yeah, so where do we want to go? Do we want to do a giveaway tonight? Ooh, giveaway sounds good. Yeah, I got more patches to give away. Does anybody out there want a patch? If so, let me know and I'll set it up. Uh. It's funny, though, because every time we do that, man, it's like the same people keep winning. I'm gonna have to unrig it. For real, oh, Yeti, no, man. Well, Yeti Clan's won like six times already. Yeah, I know. And I can't remember how to unrig it though. <laughs> yeah. If you don't remember how you rigged it in the first place, it's really hard to unrig. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really. All right. So Mint City Matthew said he wants a patch, so I'll go ahead and set that up. But yeah, man. <laughs> you win. All right. Yeah. There's a giveaway. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh I'll go ahead and get it going though. For real. Give me a second. But um, yeah, man, let's talk about the game, man. I thought the first half we were actually uh, pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, I did too, right? I mean, one of the things that I've seen improvement in this Dean Smith team is, you know, we look more threatening on set pieces. We, we like moaned about that last year a lot. And we saw that, you know, Urso came pretty close um, on that header in that first half. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we don't, we're not a team that... One of the three games, we haven't held a lot of possession, but we're still dangerous and we're still creating chances. Our issue, though, is uh, well, I guess we'll just right jump into it, right? Like, it. is our inability to finish in that final third, right? And I said this at the beginning of the season uh, for us to have a good season, we need our DPs firing. And I think Enzo has done a good job at other things, right? His um, off the ball movements, his his hold the play, opening up space for other players, right? But the one thing that we need from our DP striker is goals, right? And that opportunity that he missed, like a good DP has to make those one v one situations, right? Um, and I think, I mean, going up one nil in that half, right? It could have been a completely different story in this game, right? That could have been two or three nil in that half, right? I mean, we like you were saying, we had the the corner that came over, and then we had the um, the triple the header. header. Yeah, and then obviously the shit that Capetti missed. I For mean, that sure. was all. You, know I mean, like, you see, like the difference in right, like I mean, Insigne <laughs> costs a lot of money. <laughs> Go ahead, Insigne keep going. costs a lot of money. Right, and you saw that he's made the difference for Toronto two games back to back, right? Especially with that worldie that he scored against us, and so um, it was 
It's a tough pill to swallow, right? Because, you know, I think like Dean mentioned, the team did enough to get something out of that game, right? To me, Toronto hasn't looked that great of a team, but they're getting results and that's important, right? Nobody if, scored on them yet this if, season. If you can stay in games and have a guy like Insigne make the difference, you can make a playoff in MLS, right? Nine and 14, you don't have to be that great. No, not at all. But yeah, like I said, they haven't had a, a team score against them at all this season. Their keeper's pretty good, but I mean, with that, it was that, their backup keeper. Was it their backup keeper? Yeah, their Toronto's the starting keeper didn't even start. It was their backup. No, I mean when when Capetti missed that goal, though. I mean, I thought his first touch was good. It took him out right and it gave him that space. But good God, it's like either he fluffed it or like he just I don't know. I would have gone top ninety, top end. Right in the top, yeah. Kind of like Insigne did, right? In that second yeah, 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 yeah. That was sick. But we were. We were like two different teams during, you know, the second half. We looked slow. We were giving them space. You know, Toronto had a lot more possession of the ball. They seemed to be more in control. We just yeah. sort of were like just trotting around, following them around the pitch. So I think, same, same I think that, too. that too you could take a look at, you know, like, I mean, our midfield is pretty up there in age, right, with Ashley or so and Breck the Yagate, right? So the replacements or, you know, like giving these guys that are coming in, your Petkovics, your Diani when he comes in minutes, is going to be very important for that rotation piece in that midfield, right? But again, like our ability to finish is what's going to determine how high this team can finish in MLS and if they can make a playoff uh, in itself, right? Because look at it, our four DPs that we've invested in the past, Karol Swiderski, a striker, Enzo Kopetti, a striker, Camille Yazviak, a winger, right? Abada now, a winger. U22 position in Kerwin, right? Our midfielder, Breck de Yagere, who's going to play that 10 role this season, is almost on a million, right, a hit towards the salary cap. So the investment from Charlotte FC has been the heaviest investment is in that final third, right? And we need these guys clicking. That's what Dean was talking about. You know, mentioning um, that, you know, one of the things that they work, they've been working on is that build-up play in that final third, right, being more effective. We're going to need that, right? We're gonna Are we need seeing it, though? Those. Are we seeing it? Because, I mean, to me – We're creating opportunities, but we yeah. need the finishing. The finishing – that's why you spend mm -hmm. so much money on your striker and your wingers, right, because these guys have to have the ability to score goals. Like, that's what I'm going to judge. At the end of the day – the level of importance for me when you're in those positions, wingers is goals and assists. Your striker is your goals. That's no, one hundred percent. I mean, that's what just they the, got the that's the... at Atlanta hat trick this weekend. What's that? Sorry, I just had a pop up show up for no reason on my computer. It just, made me freak out. Look at a guy like Yakumakis in Atlanta. But you know, my point is though, right? I mean, regardless, I mean, yes, Capetti missed some some. Well, goals that I think he should have scored, right? I mean, that's two this season. I think he should have scored at least and then already. He that one in the first game, right? Yeah, yeah. Although, right. to be fair to him, that Vancouver game, I thought he played well. It's just yeah, yeah. missing the opportunity, right? But I'm I, well, going to be judged on as a striker. Well, as a, my point was, is I don't feel like he's getting any service yet. I mean, he's not really, at least, you know, going back off the Toronto game, I don't feel like, you know, he had one or two. I, I don't think Brett. The first half, I think the team overall played really well. That second half, it was like we got lethargic. Our legs got tired. There was no real – no passes strung together, in my opinion. And, there's, and you know, he, I just he, don't think he's getting any service. Lee, he's, he had – he's missed two 1v1 opportunities. I'm that. not doubting that. I'm if saying he but he's not getting – If he would have made one of those – if we would if he would have made that uh, goal against Toronto – we would not be having this conversation right now. No, but right? I'm not. So I'm not arguing the point that he should have it's made him. Now that you know, that's something that we're going to need from him. We need goals. We need him to have a 10 plus goal season at Charlotte FC. We need to replace Swiderski's goal contributions last year and add more to that. I yes. agree, a hundred percent. My point was. He's getting one, two passes a game that where he's actually getting the opportunity. I mean. Well, there's no link up play in my opinion from like the, the defensive mids to, to the yeah. forwards, right? I, so I think we're missing more. We you want to see more from Breck de Yagre, right? Yes, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. He's gotta he's gotta give those line breaking pass. He's gotta create 
he's got to put those balls in that's going to create opportunities for our strikers. Yeah, I mean, I just think if he's going to be a creative midfielder, he needs to create more. For sure. I mean, and for now, especially this first part of the season, I think he has to be key. I had him as my player of the season for this year. Let's hope he lives up to that, you know. Is that um, the top being curse? <laughs> that <laughs> might be, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think, JT? What do you think of the game? I agree with all of that y'all said. No, it was just it. The the goal that they scored that that was just an insane top bin ninety goal. And that was a great Capetti goal. Again, I don't know. Well, the one two three hitter thing I thought was just super fun, and me and the boys really enjoyed that when it was like ding ding ding. I agree with what Jorge said. At the very least, it feels like a, a, a breath of fresh air. That the set pieces are to our advantage. I, I like when we have a corner, I'm excited. I'm like, we have a good chance to score this. But, you know, we still don't have even all our pieces and don't have our, our winger coming in. So, yeah, I, wish, I mean, I, I wish so much Capetti would have let, would have taken that penalty instead of giving it to Vargas in the first game. Because I think if he could just have gotten the ball on the net, all the rest of it, it's like almost like he's got the – I don't even want to say the word. But he is not – at that very end, the most pivotal time he can make it, he's been missing it, fluffing it, putting it right there. He's got great movement off the ball. And maybe people aren't getting it to him, Lee, which I agree with as well. But he he's the man. And he's – I mean, all, he just had no, to go – No, I mean, I don't get I, me wrong. I think he – I like, all these comments saying I'm like kind of crazy. For, no, I totally. I I think Capetti should have put those at least the two or three chances away that he's had. Uh, like, there's no doubt in my mind. I'm just kind of moving on from the obvious, right? And just saying that he doesn't have any sort of – there's nobody really linking up with him yet, right? And like you said, JT, I think we're still in that transition mode from, you know, Mars and Latanzio. I think Dino's doing a great job of what he has and what he's been given. And now hopefully when Abada comes in, we can actually maybe move Vargas over to the left. I don't know, but like some of these people are saying in here, I mean, there's a lot of uh, a lot of our plays been going down the right side. And it's yeah. like we're not really like playing that middle of the park that Dino talks about wanting to play. And we're definitely not playing anything down in, in the, on the left side. And then to your point, JT, about Capetti taking that penalty and, and, or not taking that penalty, that was what I said at the beginning. He needed to come out in that New York game and get an early goal and just get, have that sort of cockiness amplify and for him to uh, just move on. I bet you if he had taken that penalty and scored, he would have scored those other two goals. But we'll never know. All I'm talking about is amplified cockiness. Amplified cockiness. <laughs> that That's needs it. to be on a, on a shirt, amplified cockiness. I know, right? Yeah. Yes. And I mean, to a point, they did block us from playing through the middle. But I mean, the first half, I, I'll disagree with most. Of it. I think it's, we played our weird game. too. A two o'clock game. And, you know, it being in Canada, although, you know, Toronto's a lot farther south than uh, some places in the United States. But anyway, still in the crap weather, it was so nasty. And two o'clock. I mean, I, I really, I, I would have been happy coming out of there with a draw and one point, just like in Vancouver. And I really think that the Italian, he's Italian, right? The, the guy who hit it for Toronto, he was the same one from the previous game that did some kind of crazy little drop over the goalie to, to beat, I think, uh, New England. But it, that was an amazing goal. I mean, that was badass. So hopefully uh, Capetti can get something like that. But at the same time, you know, I don't know. I, I don't. I, I don't disagree feel- with this. I still think we're still be having the same conversation about not having the. No, service. you wouldn't. You wouldn't. Yes, not I would. No, you wouldn't. Let it go, Lee. Why wouldn't we? Let it go. Why Why you you the the okay, I let it go. It's gone. Okay, it's dropped. The conversation's dropped. Look at why. Why do we rate a DP like Insigne? Because he had very few opportunities, and he put the one that he needed away. Right. If you look at some of the game, like some of the shots he took were terrible. Nobody's talking about those terrible shots, but they're talking about the worldy that he scored. Why? Because that's what matters. That's what made the difference in that game. That made the 1-0, right? You know, the, the game that Toronto won previous to ours in New England, they were getting peppered the whole second half. It took one magic moment from 
Insigne to change the game, right? That is just the expectations when you have a DP player. Hey, that's fine if he's not getting enough service, but the, the few services that he has, like when they're clear-cut chances the way they were this weekend, you have to put it away. That's just the reality. I would agree 100%. with you more if there was no opportunities and people were giving him flat. That would make sense, right? We're like, okay, well, we didn't see, but it was very uh, – All right, everything. so outside of the yeah, two also, obvious also, clarion – op- Go ahead. Also, the That's pass that, that Yuri, Yuri Tavares gave to him where it wasn't a penalty. He could have probably done better in that play as well. Which one? The the pass in that first half that Yuri Tavares gave for that penalty that wasn't called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So that's, that's another opportunity. That's fair. All right. So I lost my whole train of thought. But yeah. So other train than the, went off the tracks, it did go off the tracks. Other than the um, actual two glaring opportunities that he missed, what other chances has the guy been given? Right. Obviously, why are we still talking about I, this? I what do you mean? On. Outside of you missing a goal, what other opportunities? What? what kind of question is this? Move what on. Kind of- I'm Somebody just saying, called. I just Somebody think we should have more called. service up front. Somebody I think called. we should have more f- service oh, up front. No. Somebody but what you're saying, you make it sound like that man had no... No, I'm not. No, I'm not. In the game. Roscoe. No, I'm not. I did not say that at all. I did not say that at all. I'm just call? saying... What's the club we, paying you now? So we could sit here and bitch about him yes, missing me. those glaring opportunities, but yes, we could say that. But other than that, how many other shots did we get? How many other chances on goal did we get? Other than that. What do you need? You want 15 one Oh, I'm not one? saying that, Jorge. You're I'm not saying, saying that. No, I'm not, man. You're totally taking this and running it a completely different way. No, you're running Look off left expected. field with it. No. Have you seen our expected? Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, I have. What is it? It's it was like one and it was, half that game. Yeah, yeah. Right? But we didn't even so score one and a half last we season, are, did we? We're not creating enough, but we are creating opportunities. We did. We, we what? So they got that off of two and a half games. They got that off of two and a half games, right? Three games. Three games. Well, so how how was that possible if that was, was the third game we were playing? So two we're games. The expected goals. Off of yeah, the yeah. I games. know. Expected goals, right? right? I mean, we didn't score more than fucking a goal and a half last season if we right. were lucky. So then, so then what, what you should really be asking is we have to increase the amount of possession to create more opportunities, right? Because two out of three games, we've, we haven't held more possession in the opposing team. And in the game against Vancouver, it was 59 to 40. To like we it was fifty one to forty nine, right? So barely over the possession that a team requires, right? There's been opportunities that guys have. We've improved in certain areas. Like I I'm said, not saying we haven't improved. Good. I'm just going off of the yeah. game that I watched here earlier this well, afternoon. You want thirty? Uh, you want thirty one v one? No, you're no, so you're, no, you're, you're, you're taking it and just being obnoxious about it. That's not what I'm saying at all. That's not what I'm. I'm not expecting there to be thirty or forty chances on goal. I'm just saying I just. Forget Capetti completely. Like, there's no other service coming in right now. I mean, other than the right wing and that set pieces. My guy, we scored against Vancouver. We scored against NYCFC. Okay. We missed a penalty against NYCFC. Vargas okay. missed a 1v1 against NYCFC. Okay. We missed the goal against Toronto. Uh, okay. That 1v1 that, that he had. Uh, Enzo could have done better on that ball that Yuri gave him. Right, so there's been opportunities. Could there be more opportunities? Yes, but that doesn't. So you make think Breck is doing? Do you think Breck is doing a good job? You think Breck's doing a good job? Scores. You think Breck is doing a good job? I didn't say all of that. I said that. <laughs> that's my fucking that. point. That's not your point. You're making it is my score. point. No, it's not. not. You, just me. I said you, Capetti you're can like, I need 15 one v one. Talk about boys, 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 boys. Yeah, come here, man. <laughs> this is not good video. Shots on goal. This is enough. We, we nah, had ten last game. He's, he's still pissed off about the city result to this weekend. I'm gonna leave. I'm just gonna walk away. Why we can't get heated and have a good discussion? For real. Oh, that's, oh now you want to fight with me. Okay, okay. Yeah, now you want to hit people with trash. Bring it, man. I'm, damn it. Give me something to throw at the screen, damn it. Damn it. You anyway. are, you Edward. Hey, put Edward, Edward Gonzalez is coming up there. Yeah, that's Edward. We Edward, Edward calling the damn show, oh, man. Well, everyone could always be better. They can always be better. That's not, yeah, of course, right? We could say that every hey, week. We could win Lee. 6 0 and we could say that. Lee, 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 leave the comments up just a little bit longer. Because I can barely even see him on my little phone with my reading. Oh, I'm trying to read and argue with Jorge, apparently. I know, man. You're losing your voice. You're just getting over 
little little cold. Come on, Jorge. Thank you, Edward. He's an That's old man, right Jorge. There. He he's an old man. Don't do that to him. <laughs> he's like, why I invite this guy? We don't out? use Zoom. You have to call into the show. The number's at the bottom of the screen there. Yes, call in. Just wait for the beep. You gotta leave uh, yeah, name. Danny, you we don't use Zoom, man, if you want in. All right, go ahead. Y'all run with it. What else you want to talk about? <laughs> I think I like to help. I mean, obviously, there's been an improvement, right, in the squad. There has been an improvement, 100%. Yeah. Last, the first three games of the season last year, we had seven goals scored on us, and we had scored one goal, I believe, right? If you look at this season, two goals, right? We had no points. This year, we're at four, right? And also, um, we've gotten scored on off of a set piece and off of a world-class goal. So I think these things are going to be very key for us in order to try to finish within that ninth, eighth spot that I think that we'll finish in, right? And so a defensive structure, that to me, that's a very big positive early on because Dean's still missing key pieces that can make a, a big difference, right? So, I mean, as, as we continue to become a, a – a more difficult team to break down, that's going to be very important for us this season, that that was something that was hindering us last year. We were creating opportunities and scoring goals, right? But, you know, those last-minute goals, our inability to defend was a big issue. If we cut those 50-plus goals that we received last year to, you know, maybe low 40s, high 30s, there's a big opportunity that we can have you know, that we can be fighting for a solid position, maybe seventh even in the East. That's where we sit now. Nice. I want sixth, man. I think I called sixth. Hey, um, is there any truth? What is the actual date in April that's the cutoff to get any more players in before the summer break? I think it's the 21st. Okay, so almost the whole month of April. Yeah. So – there was rumblings out there that Dino and Zarin, whatever, they're going to hopefully get one more. April deep 23rd. In. 23rd, my bad. Two more days than what I said. <laughs> Just Point up. being, though, do we really Two think there's going to be one more DP coming in? Say that again? I, yeah. What, hey, why don't y'all stop talking for a second and just let me talk? Jesus. <laughs> Do we think there's going to be another DP before the window closes in April? No. No. Right. I would say the strategy would be maybe find another center back, right? And then in the summer, go for that DP 10, right? To kind of, because if you look at it right now, when he's replacing Breck, he's bringing in Scott Arfield in that creative role, right? And I mean, I don't think that's really what, like, that's not my expectations of, of a guy like Scott Arfield, right? So um, we need to bring in somebody that can make those line-breaking passes, that has that creative and that technical ability. And the only guy we have that with that right now is Brett. And how's he doing? He's doing okay. I mean, he's not doing great. It's not amazing, but it's also not terrible, right? The guy already has an assist. Don't forget, his assist was crucial for us to get a point in Vancouver. Who gave Yuri that ball? It was the awesome dummy by Capetti. Okay. Was it not? It was. It was a who 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 got credited the assist. <laughs> I'm just messing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that was my that, yeah. See, look, look, yep. See, right. So uh, that was my whole point, though. Right. Uh, uh, never mind. Oh it's God, gone. No. It's past. It's past. No. It's past. It's gone. No. It was. That was my point. I wasn't just as articulate. He's looking enough for to another opportunity, right? Because he needs fifteen one v ones for there to be chances. Is yes. all I heard. Yes. Well, the CB be under. I doubt it. Um. So yeah, we got Abada coming back. I think uh, Double D's ready to go. Right. Yeah, I think last weekend in uh, Dean's presser last Thursday, he mentioned that he was just waiting for the passport now, which should be coming in. So I expect him to be there for the Nashville game, hopefully. Tomorrow there's a um, presser and, you know, some training. So hopefully he's out there. Yeah. Uh, look who's back. What's up, Esteban? Anyways. Um, so do we think – 
who do we think is going to be swapped out in the starting lineup? If the starting lineup has been the same for the first three games, coming in this next game with who we know is coming back, do we think there's going to be any changes for sure in the starting lineup? It's a really good question. I don't think so. Not I think uh, not not right out the bat. Right, maybe the game after Nashville. Because is Double D playing this week? Is he available this week? I mean, if right, he, I was busy it, doing it's going to depend on whether he's here or not, right? Like, if he's at training mm-hmm. tomorrow, there's an opportunity, right? Yeah, but I, if, 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 I guess my point is that first game that he's here, he's probably not going to start. Well, right? you know, well, I'm not sure because after we signed him, he played that last game right off the bat, right? That last preseason game in Coachella, he started mm-hmm. that game. I mean, it's also a preseason, right? For sure, but I mean, for I mean, like, remember when Vargas first came in? Miguel used them like three days later, right? So there's there's certain needs that coaches see that are beneficial to the team that some players can can be slotted in right away. A lot of people are up against saying re- replacing, oh, put double D in for Ursa. For sure, I, I can definitely see that him a double pivot with Westwood. So. Hi, right, JT, number twelve. I don't have 20 written tonight. I didn't have internet, <laughs> man. I'm working off my phone. I had all these other... You issues. don't need internet to write stuff down on paper? Dog. Anyway. Hey, I'll tell you. I'll give you, I'll give you one. Uh, I did really enjoy, in the first half of the game, Vargas had that sweet little move that he he back... I've never seen a player do it, because I don't you know watch as much as I guess y'all have, but he back healed it off of the defender to ricochet out of bounds to get the corner. It was just a sweet little move. He did this cool little – it's on the 16th minute, and I made a note of it watching the game. So, yeah, there you go. There's number 12. Yeah. I mean, it, again, right? I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> way to pull number 12 out, JT. Got you. Yeah. But um, what was I going to say? Yeah, I mean, it was night and day, right, between the first half and the second half. I think uh, – our field looked kind of slow, right? When um, when they cut in and got that goal, I think he could have maybe been a little closer, but it is what it is. It was a good goal. Yeah, it was. Um, but I mean, if we don't get a result against Nashville, um, how how do you rate the, these three away trips? You know, I mean, it's a results business, right? So that's what makes it tricky. I mean, it's just good to see us actually playing some decent ball. Um, you know, like I said, the second half, I, I wasn't too, you know, I wasn't too excited about, but that first half, if we can come out and play like that for at least 70 minutes, I think we would do all right. Yeah. To me, um, my perspective on this was, I thought, um, I wanted four points out of these, uh, three away games, but because I didn't think we could win against NYCFC to, to start the season, but to me right now, it's fine. Right. Like when when it comes to MLS, what's going to be important is winning winning your games at home, and we did that against NYCFC. Pulling points away, right, can be important in terms of how up uh, how high on the table you can be, but it's not detrimental to getting into a playoff, right? Right, like you don't have to consistently win away, right? Win your home mm-hmm. games, win a couple of away games, and pull points away from teams in the East, right? Because the biggest issue that I'm seeing right now is that there's teams in this conference that have not have not woken up yet, right? I think New England Revolution can, you know, have a good season. They started out terribly. Orlando has started out bad as well, right? And, I mean, Orlando, by some, was in contention to win the supporter show this year. Yeah, I mean, after the Nashville game, though, right, we played Columbus, Cincinnati, and New England, man, and then yeah, Toronto so again. Definitely- We've got we got very very difficult five uh, four or five games ahead of us. It seems yeah. like it was a difficult start, you know. Now that you think about it, you know, it, it great for us to get the win at home against the opener, but um, then to go Canada a week later, Canada, and then three you know three weeks away, and then to go to a hard place to play, great atmosphere, great home home crowd advantage, Columbus. And then finally, we're back here against, you know, one of the better teams in the East, against Cincinnati. Uh, it's also weird just being off for this long, you know. It's like, hey, it's the start of the season. And then it's like, 
you know, a lull and, and to see it in, in the afternoons and everything, that's fine. But I don't know. So do we it beat just, Nashville this weekend? I don't oh, think it's so. Nashville this weekend? When is Columbus? Yeah. That's a, that home game the following week. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we do have the advantage of them playing tonight, right, in Gonka Champions. Yeah, that's why people have been posting it here. So hopefully. Uh, or tomorrow, sorry. Not tomorrow tonight. night. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Two goals to see so far. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think the back line is doing well. Obviously, if Capetti had scored those two missed opportunities, we'd have like three or four goals now. Uh, nine points. Thank you. I'm liking Privet. Yeah, Privet's doing yeah. really well. I think he's been solid. Who, who has impressed you guys these first three matches? So, oh, Melanda for sure, right? Uh-huh. I think Melanda, Privet, and who will be my third one? I don't know. I don't know if there's I think, a. I mean, I don't think Yuri had his best game, but I don't think it was that bad against Toronto. But he's come in and been a fresh, a breath of fresh air, right? He's yeah. going to be one of those guys that can be competing for a starting position. Yeah, he's yeah. Actually, yeah, he he has. Thinking back on the game just a minute ago that I watched, yeah, I'd say it definitely. Uh, yeah, see people. Are yeah, I think, I think Yeri Ronan is a solid player, right? He's been yeah. a he. He was a big. He was a huge get that we don't talk about in that left back position. And it's well, it's like a new signing almost in itself, right? Because I mean, we didn't get to really use him too much last year. Yeah, I, mean, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you too, though. I mean, you know, he looks the part. Coming out of the tunnel, beginning the game, and just it just looks like a badass. He looks like he's ready to go out there, and you know, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm reading the comments. Y'all just stop talking, and I have to like try to pick back up where we're at. Uh, yeah, I was going to mention what John just mentioned. Like his corner services are great. I mean, he was the one on that corner where Urso almost scored. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I think one of the things that Charlotte has done well is identifying depth pieces and identifying like young players that are coming in. We've seen it with the Patrick Ajimans. We're seeing it with the Yuris. Brandon Cambridge for a bit last year. Privet, you know, Privet is a solid, solid center back. You know? my he saved us a couple of times that first game as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I Privet's think I think our back four is pretty, pretty. I, I would stick with them. I don't see any reason to change them up. They haven't done anything glaringly, obviously. Yeah, but, just, I think, you know. but I think in the span of 34 games, that's oh, where you need an experienced center back, I think. Yeah. Well, a center back? For sure. I mean, <laughs> see, see, Casey trying to wind me up out here, man. I think he's a great player. I think he's doing really well. I just wish Capetti had scored those two one-on-one -on -one opportunities that he should have taken. I'll, number, tw I'll... number 12, JT. <laughs> um, if you were in the Carolinas today, uh, today was a very beautiful day. It was 72 degrees, sunny skies, nice breeze, no bugs out yet. It was just a beautiful touch of spring day if you are around these parts. That's number 12, Lee. Awesome. Awesome. All right, so what do we know? What We got any news about any other players coming in, Jorge? No, not yet. I mean, I'm expecting at least one more signing right before the MLS transfer window closes on the 23rd, like you pointed out. On a Tuesday, right. too. On a Tuesday, right? Typical MLS. Yeah. Right, you know? So, I mean, the one advantage that we do have, right, in a window like this, right, once that European window closes on the 31st, um, if there are players that are disgruntled or, you know, want playing times, and are looking to get out of their teams in Europe, MLS is a very, very attractive league for that. I mean, that's one of the key things when you sign a guy like Leal Abada, right, where he's, he's he doesn't have the best situation at a team like Celtic. Does he wait till the summer window, or can he find a way out now? And that's what um, coming to a team like Charlotte FC does for him, right? He's coming in one of the very few markets that are open right now, right? and coming into a competitive league. So when it comes to finding players that you can kind of get for a bargain or extra added value, you have that during this time in this transfer window. Do y'all think that, the, you know, he, he's a sign with his, his age and coming from Celtic, 
that it's a sign of of the tide turning, you know, for that age group to come to MLS? I, I think I think that's more in terms of the ability of like these guys have, you know, they failed with growing back. They failed with Luciano, right? Um, uh, I forgot who else we were in, but there's been four or five young targets, right? And they got one finally with a bada, which is a great, I'd say, uh, eight out of ten signing, um, especially with his age and especially what he can produce, right? You know, we talked about that end product. We're really going to need him to come in and step in with end product or being in positions to score, right? That's one of the things, if you go through his highlights, you know, he seems to always be in the right positions, right? And that's very important for uh, an attacking player in that final third, learning how to read the game, understanding positioning, being in the right places to either score a tap in or to create a good opportunity for you to score. We're going to need that. We're going to need somebody that finishes right? Because Vargas and Enzo have not done enough just yet in that final third, right? We're expecting them to, right? I'm not going to just go off of these first three games so far that they've had. I want to see 10 to 15 games. I want to see Vargas starting 10 to 15 games. I need to see Enzo for 10 to 15 games. I'm willing to give him that time, but they have to start delivering. Lee, do yeah. you think he'll get, Lee, do you think he'll, uh, he'll get some service to, uh, <laughs> oh shit! Did I say that? Yeah, yeah. No, but I guess. Uh, I mean, I think we kind of got lucky with the uh, Abada kind of deal, though. Going back to the ones you mentioned, Jorge, we missed out on, right? I mean, there's there's a lot of off-field antics and stuff that's kind of gone into this, fallen into our lap, and um, you know, I mean, kudos to Zorn and Co for getting him, right? I know they have a good working relationship with Celtic, so you know, I'm excited to see him play. Hopefully, he comes here, he gets his. Uh, Gets his chance to shine here at, uh, in Charlotte, and um, he better come here. We talking about he is coming here. I'm talking about. Yeah. Get, hopefully, he comes here and can shine. Yeah, oh. listen, being being 22, he hasn't even touched his prime yet, right? You know, when when do we typically see the prime of players? 24, 25, 26, 27. That's when these guys start entering their prime, right? For him to already have double digit numbers, right? Albeit, it's still a team like Celtic that you know. You know, there's really no competition in the Scottish Premier League outside of Rangers, right? So it's easier, in my opinion, to stat pad in these leagues. But you yeah. still have to go in there. You still have to score the goals. You still have to get the assist. And being 2021 20, and going into a fan base like the Celtic fan base, who are very, very like these guys want Brendan Rodgers out, and they're still fighting for the for the league. Oscar's Rangers yeah. is now top of the league, right? Yeah, and they're they're only like two points ahead of them, I think. I think last yeah, time. Well, I might be wrong. So how long do we think about a six around? Well, let's let's first see how good he can be, right? Because on paper he looks like he's going to be a great signing, right? Yeah. But on paper, so did Enzo, and he has still yet to deliver what we're expecting from a DP striker. So I'm before not, I want to see him score, have, have double digit seasons before I before I make an, any assumptions on how he can do. That's right. Yeah. No, I think I I and again I think I think Dean's got the boys cooking, man. I think we just just that last little touch, man, is all we need. I can't yeah, wait. You know, so I really to me also like Dean Smith is very very open and very honest with what he sees, what, how he has said this team. If the team isn't playing well, he calls it out. Some of the, I mean, like, it's very refreshing. You know, I, I like this style of manager that's, like, very, like, I feel like he's just talking to us and being real, you know? So I think that's important. I think it was funny. I'll give you guys a tidbit on the, um, the last presser that uh, we had last week where um, I think it was Bridget from Queen's Pitch that asked him about uh, the Toronto Olympico they scored on last year. And he was like, Olympico? He's like, what's an Olympico? So it was pretty funny that, like, you know, he didn't really know what an Olympico was. Hey, it's yeah. like me. It's like me. I don't know what it is. <laughs> That's it. Well, I mean, to, to, to your point, I mean, I don't think uh, – I mean, the British press is, is pretty brutal in general. So, you know, learning how well, to navigate that is probably a lot easier than – Come yeah, on. I mean, it's like easier. Well, so you have those po added positives. You have you've already experienced what it's like to be under extreme scrutiny yeah. in a league where you're playing in one of the top teams, as in Celtic, 
you're coming to the MLS where like we're nowhere near as tough or as you know in these players' faces as as the press is over there, right? You're coming into a league that's that can let you blossom. The interview I did with Sergio Ruiz, he mentioned a lot of these things. He said the facilities, you know, the way they treat the players, you know, all these things are things that like d don't necessarily happen in every team, you know, in Europe. So he's coming into a growing league and into a team that does not yet have a star. We don't have a guy. We don't have a Honey Mukhtar. We don't have a Drusi. We don't have a Yakumakis now. A player like that, of that stature that we're all looking at, and like, yo, this is our guy. This is who's going to take us to a promised land. And that could potentially be a guy like Abada. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> coming. Yeah, let me. Okay, the team doesn't. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> you know how that goes, man. For real. I'm about to get hate. I know. That's it. There we go again. I thought we put that one to rest, too. <laughs> but no, yeah, I agree. I mean, we don't have like that one. One star player, right? Maybe Abada is going to be it for us. Who knows? Let's I guess hope we'll so. Yes. So, do we? Um, what do you think of score predictions? Y'all drop the score predictions uh, for for the Nashville game. Yeah. How about we talk a little bit about Crown Legacy, their first match? Let's do it. Bring it up. That's Sunday, right? Yeah, this Sunday. You know, they're actually going to play Carolina Core, which is a team that I'm developing a good relationship with. Oh, you know, self self plug right here. I, okay, I now understand. For sure, you know. Hey, hey no, 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 hold on. You're doing a lot of great oh, things. Oh, Listen, oh, bro. Oh, Unlike oh, you guys, I care about soccer in the Carolina. You oh, talk oh, about service. You only servicing Charlotte FC. I'm servicing oh, multiple teams. Gosh. I'm creating more opportunities for teams in North and South Carolina. Isn't this what you just talked about? Having more hey, service. Hey, I'm no, no, no. Hey, 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 you know what? Hey, Charlotte hey, Metro hey, is my. Hey. <laughs> stop it stop it this is why jg's not in that group chat yeah, no, all I'm saying is, this is a normal monday for us <laughs> oh, I know, right yeah except for it's tuesday <laughs> so yes okay now what were you saying lee uh the legacy game is this weekend sunday yeah a from what i heard carolina cores bring in a couple of buses here as well so, uh, y'all, where, where are they from? Crown Legacy, where's Carolina, Carolina Core from? High Point, and I know ah, ah, triad, yeah, hey man, the triad boys rolled hard, man. Yeah, uh -huh. Sunday at five, Sunday at five. Thanks, Alicia. Yeah, I might be able to go down there. I got a uh, a memorial to go to Sunday, so uh, it'll depend if I can make it to the Legacy game or not. I might be able to go to it, but I gotta go mourn someone who died. Wow. Wow, Lee. I didn't say somebody who died. I said I had a memorial to go to. All right. Well, I guess I don't really know what that means. It's, it ain't matter. <laughs> Anyways, yes. So Legacy's first game. That should be fun. I believe the tickets are fairly cheap, right? I think it's only like 10 bucks a pop, apparently. Yeah, and I mean, they had a great season last year, you know. We, yeah, yeah. we haven't had a home game in three weeks, so it's great to, you know, be in that Charlotte FC sphere, right, with the Crown Legacy boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think so uh, should be a great well, that's at the place yeah. in uh, Matthews? Yes. Yeah, at Four the Plex. Plex. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, no, we're having a good time. Believe it or not, we all love each other. This is, honestly, folks, if, if you guys were in some group chats with us, this is basically how they go. Except that you, uh, and then sometimes there's some voice messages that get dropped in there just because we got tired of uh, typing it out so much. <laughs> and quoting yeah. ourselves. Anyway, you know, I, I definitely like to wind people up. That's one of my like secret pleasures. Yes, yes. Slash, slash talent. Slash what did you call it earlier? What kind of cockiness? What's that? And, and what was it? The the thing from earlier, the co cockiness with attitude or attitude cockiness? I'm gonna go back. I can go back through the uh, comments. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, anyways, <laughs> somebody call in. Hey, seriously though, Lee, what the fuck? Where's Roscoe? I'm not even kidding anymore. I thought you knew the dude. I thought you said no, I didn't know the guy. I told you he just calls in. Well, he hadn't called in in two years. I did a whole bit last year trying to find him into what. I, I mean, you know, 
you know, you know, when it just happens, it happens, man. Amplify Roscoe, cooking. if you're out there, please, please, somebody right? call in. Someone try to pretend to be Roscoe. <laughs> Shit. Pretend to be Roscoe. That'd be yeah. funny. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, so yeah. Uh did we ever did it will you ever drop say the scores? What do we think the score is gonna be for the Nashville game this weekend? Um, do you want me to say mine? Yeah, go for it. Two one Nashville. <laughs> Gaines winner. Well, yeah, Gaines is. I, I'm I'm happy for Gaines, man. Yeah, you know, I think he's doing pretty good out there. It looks like he's having a good time, man. So, uh, yeah. And if you don't know who Roscoe is, go look through some of our channels. We actually clipped it out on our YouTube, and so it, it has Ro Roscoe. Roscoe cool. Yeah, but I I I, I don't know. I, I can see like a, a a a two two incoming or a two one us. So, is it a seven o'clock game? It's, it it's is a 8.30. 8.30? Yeah, because well, they're an hour behind us, right? They're central. All right. Weird. Yeah. 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 So. I'm, I'm saying 2-1 uh, us. Dang. I would like I a moment. I got a – is Melanda playing? Melanda's going to play, right? Melanda, unless he's hurt. Unless he's hurt, which he Melanda. isn't. So. I just can envision Melanda's stature just scoring. So, Melanda and Capetti. So, people can get off his nuts. Yeah. Melanda, yeah. again, he'd be our top scorer, man. For real. Imagine our defenders are top scorers. <laughs> you know, I don't care how, who it is as long as they fucking And hey, set pieces, baby. He's like, what, 6'6? Six, six? Whatever, man. Yes, he is 6'6. Six, six. No, he's like 6'5, six, I think. But I oh, guess 6'6 yeah. six, six works, right? So, anyways, Dang, side yeah, so, Patrika, five nil on Philly. That's crazy. Anyway. Yeah, Patrick Capetti. Does Capetti wake up for this game? I don't think he does. I don't think he does. I think he's going to come back to Charlotte and then start cooking. So, anyways, but yeah. So um, there were some co questions in here. Have we thought about uh, going to a different gate after the match? Nope, won't do it ever. It's always going to be right there so people yeah. can find us and know about us and all that. So it's uh, yeah. never, never going to happen. Now, now, yeah, now. it's definitely a, a good spot where you guys are at as well. I mean, I, I don't get a chance to come out there because we're doing like press stuff, but like you guys are right on like close to the neon lights. Right? No, no, we got a caller. Man. We got a caller. Let's, uh, let's see what this caller has to say. Yes, yeah, Jorge. We're right there by the, the LED screen. What up, caller? What's up? Not much. What's up with you? So you saying you never going to a different gate? No, nope, never will. Never, never will. Never go to a different gate. Oh, okay, I thought you spread the love around. Uh, well, I mean, now, 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 what I was going to say, Lee, is yeah, I could see us in the future having All right. multiple people spread at different gates, but we'll always be at the original East Gate with the LED screen, and then we might have some other people at different gates in the future. Yeah. I don't know, man. Who's it? Who's calling? No one now. They they got dropped. Now what you heard was what you heard it, like it was you could hear the YouTube in the background. The reverb, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. No, I mean, hey y'all technology. <laughs> technology. Yeah. So, hey, thank no, you, caller. I don't know yeah. who you were, but was, thank you for calling it was John. in. It was John. Well, what John, you... appreciate you calling in, man. And uh, yeah, you got to come find us out there. Because also, that's where you know, the supporters section goes in there. That is, oh, that's, that's where the... we hang out too, right? So yeah, like, that's where we, we can out. stay and watch the game, and then we can rush out and get set up and everything. Yeah, and, yeah, and it's closer to the elevators to get the press box to get the gear. Yeah. For a lot of reasons. It's not just like we're locked into it, but it is our spot. We're holding it down. We're holding it down. Holding it down. Yes. Yes, it was. That's it. That's who called in. Correct, Heidi. Uh, up, some, some other questions. Some other questions. Uh, okay. Yeah. There's um. There'll be no fan cam this season until they find a new sponsor. I thought it was sponsored by an Ally. Dang, that's crazy. Who was the yep. sponsor for them last year? Ally, right? I thought it was the Allies. Fan cam or whatever. Oh, now they're yes. too busy sponsoring the uh, women's Rexon team or something. So, 
Yeah, I know, man. And honestly, we know we we know it's a long walk, right? But unfortunately, it's just uh, that's where, like JT said, right? It's, it's there's a lot of other reasons. It's not just because we want to be outside the supporter section. So, I don't know. I didn't. Lewis is still here. Hello. And and coach at the same time. That's the gate that had the brand new. Yeah. It still has the crazy LCD screen. That's where yeah, Blue Free Area. That, that's where the band comes out. I mean, that's the hot spot, man. That's the corner, man. That's where we got to be at. They just got great clips. I saw that, too. Yeah. I, well, see, you know, that's where I get my hair did. I wonder if I can get a Hey, great clips you owe me, man. This is at least three ha free haircuts now. No, it gets get a little more on my head, man. Dad, come, man. <laughs> that's it. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Uh, sport Benton became legal yesterday. I'm scared to download an app because I don't get carried away and... Hey, I know, right? Right. Yeah. Imagine, imagine we become addicts, and then we have I have to sell over the top bin ninety channel, right? Do you guys really want that? Um, what's the over under on that? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> can, can I can I film the documentary of it? The the yeah, rise it, no, behind the scenes, right? Top yeah. bin twenty to top bin sixty to top bin ninety, and then the For fall sure. top bin zero. That net yeah. that net that Netflix special is going to be great. I, I'm I'm a lower bin zero JT. <laughs> You're all right, Jorge. You're gonna make it. You're gonna make it, Jorge. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, uh, bet ninety. Uh, that's legit. Yeah, Westwood as as uh, as the cam. No, nope. I don't see it either. No, he's more of a what what Dean has in mind now. Deep lying playmaker. That's better for him. Yeah. No, I haven't. Bonus bets. No, I honestly I haven't downloaded the app. I'm I'm gonna hold off as long as possible. But I guess um they're gonna have a sports book inside the stadium too, right? So like that's it to feed your addiction. FanDuel, I All believe right. it is, is the official one. Well, no, they they had there was through the North Carolina legislature, there's 13 licenses to be a provider of sports books. Eight of them have been taken up. So your fan duels, your draft kings, your MGM Grand, eight of them. But they wrote something in there that they have to be attached to teams in certain ways. The Panthers do not have an official one yet. Yeah, I, I think they announced know, it yesterday. Did they? They I think it, it was FanDuel. Yeah, they okay. Well then that, there should be a then FanDuel should have the right to have a physical, you know, box there to actually place bets and then whatever, obviously you can use all the other eight ones, but what they're doing right now, which is crazy and it's its own thing. They know right now yeah. is the time that you can get as much people as you possibly can to join. Hey, what's this new thing? And they're putting out all the commercials and all the Gurkowskis. I can't stand. I don't want to see that dude anymore. <laughs> F the Patriots. Yes. No, all same. these, all these people. Da, da, yeah, North Carolina. You're about to be able to bet on your phone. All yeah. this bullshit. So yeah, have some fun with it and everything. And they're like, hey, you put down five dollars, we'll give you a three hundred. But you gotta use it the next two weeks. And that's the hook, y'all. That's the hook. It is. It is the, the hook. hook. That's just the hook. So. Hey, have fun with it. Do what you gotta do. But you know, I got some kids, I, and I got my own things. I'm already, you know, I I don't need to add gambling to nothing. So <laughs> I'm just, hey, I buy my scratchers at the grocery store once a month, and I'll say, no, I don't, I'll I don't play until it hits over five hundred million. I'll drink my light beer and and buy my scratchers, and I'll be okay. Yeah. Dang, okay. Yeah. Are you are you secretly Roscoe? That sounds like something Roscoe would do. Yeah, that's why I haven't called in because he's been on the show for two years. I'm yeah. not Roscoe, but I miss the <laughs> son of a. Yeah. No, I, for real. I was done with the ads, man. I'm done with it. Like you said, with fucking what's his name, uh, Gruntsky or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, no, they're flooding the market right now because they know since it's th this is you only get one time to make a first impression, and they're like, mm -hmm. man, because they've launched it in different states over the years and like hey if you spend so much money on ads right now so unfortunately from now probably through the, the rest of the year you're gonna have that stuff all in your face yeah so what's the odds of charlotte winning this weekend so i put the uh the, the bets in or the uh whatever what's it called what's the official way to say that the uh the line somebody the, put line, the line yeah what's the line what's the line on clcfc 
What's the over and under of the Yeti clan winning another CLTFC giveaway? Oh, it would be over and under. It would be uh, rigged. Yeah, what's the line on that? It'd be like mm-hmm. what negative zero? I don't know, negative one hundred. I don't want to know too much about betting. I'm I'm good with it. No, nah, me either. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll do the um uh giveaway. The giveaway, yes. Yes, we will do the giveaway. So rigged, More rigged patches. Yes. So you give it two or one or what? Uh, we can do two, I guess. Y- y'all want to do two? It's up to you. Now, just I don't know. When Yeti Clan wins again, just give them one. <laughs> How about that? They're only getting one. Yeah, they, they're only getting one. And uh, so w- some people are still putting them uh, the uh, the comments in. So we'll give you like two more minutes. Yeah. What you watching, Jorge? Um, you tired of arguing with me? Yeah, I am. I was looking at, you know, <laughs> the, uh, some random excuse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two hundred for Charlotte to win. Is is that true? That's the line, yeah. Oh, I was fighting over the mouse, and it's over here. Two hundred for the win, huh? That's interesting. So that yeah. means if they're plus two hundred, it means if you bet two one hundred, you get three hundred. I think that's right. Yeah. yeah so you you get your hundred. That shows, your 100 that shows how much we gamble. I'm like, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Hey, Five, four, y'all about gambling. Three, two, one. Yeti clan. Are they even in here? Oh, check it out, man. See, man. I told you, buddy. I had you, man. You Yay. asked. I delivered. He asked us to put it up there. So, uh, yeah. Hit us up on the on the socials, and uh, we can, we can go from there. And uh, yeah, do we want to draw yeah, I'm again? Bringing Yeti Clan stuff to uh, the the next home game. Yeah, so Raffi, bet one hundred. if you're out there, yeah, bet one hundred to win two hundred. But so is that two hundred total? So if no. I bet a dollar, do I win three? Three hundred total. So if I bet one dollar, I can win three. Yes, yeah, just, if they will take that. Will they or take? Or if you it? bet ten, you can win thirty. That's Man. that's three cookout trades. <laughs> they call it. I told you. You man, would know, you. Jorge. You would know. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. you mean? I would know. That's crazy. Yeah, Whatever, so. man. You bust balls more than anybody I know. I do. And that's not true. Anyone that I talk to on live shows about CLTFC. But yeah, man. You all right. You all right. That's right. We like him. All right, Jorge. So tell us, man, what are you up to, man? What's going on over there in the big world of Top Bin 90? What you got going on, man? We got some great stuff, man. We launched our subscribers program. And today we launched that very first interview with uh, Sergio Ruiz, which was great, man. We got into a lot of topics. We talked Miguel Angel Ramirez. We talked Camille Yazviak. We talked, you know, he really is uh, about coming to MLS again. You know, so we've got that with our subscribers, right? We're we just launched a new segment called uh, the Future Footy, right, where we're going to highlight up-and-coming players in the Carolinas. So that's going to be a weekly segment that we're doing. Obviously, Brian and the boys are doing a great job with the articles. You know, we've got way more content coming out as well. So a lot of great things here at Top Ben. We continue to grow. We want to be, you know, one of the the best, you know, um, outlets for, for soccer in the Carolinas. So we're going to continue to grow kind of develop that standard, right? I'm trying to build 09 Barcelona. That's the goal. <laughs> Definitely not uh, last week's Liverpool. Anyways, so um yeah we got robbed. But four nil is all I saw man. All I see was four nil. Uh <laughs> yes. So yeah if you're new to the show please hit the sub button for us hit the like tell your friends about us uh, all that fun stuff find us outside the supporters section coach uh right after the games um most of the time we're at the tailgates over there at McNinch. Uh, watch parties, trying to get around all of Charlotte just to enjoy that. So, uh, yeah, other than that, man, anything else you want to add, JT? No, no, not really. I'm kidding. CLT, FC, Fan TV, for the fans, by the fans. Damn, Damn it. it. Let's go.